All right, guys, welcome back to another KevCam night class tonight. Tonight, I have uh, Jennifer along with us to help out any questions or concerns that come along the way. Jennifer, are you with us? Absolutely. Good evening, everyone. Perfect. And uh, we finally, guys, finally have Greg Payton back from Germany. So it's, it's good to have him back, let me tell you. <laughs> yes, good evening, everybody. And then uh, what we'll do um, tonight, we are going to be covering, and I, I see all the pretty close to regulars in here, so I won't go over the, the regular go-to meeting stuff, but um, at the end, um, we'll have Greg talk about some of the, the highlight points of Solid Cam World and some stuff that's coming down the pipeline for you guys and some cool things that uh, they're looking at adding in for you guys as well. So, all right, with that being said, let's dive into chamfering on 3D parts. All right, oh, looks like I lost Ronnie there for a little bit. Oh, I think he's back in. Oh, Ronnie. Yeah, oh, it looks Rick like he's McAllister coming back in. Yeah. Oh. Hopped off. You lost Rick. Yeah. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Just want to make sure I'm not having issues with go to me. Okay, good. Okay, sorry, Ronnie. We saw, I saw that I lost you there for a little bit. Okay. So what we're covering tonight is doing chamfers on 3D parts. So I'm going to do kind of three different ways of doing chamfers on a 3D surface part. Um, we'll do kind of one as a profile. And then another way of going about it is using contour 3D. And then um, lastly, what we'll do is use HSS and use that along a 3D surface as well. Um, so we're looking at a part here, fairly simple, easy part. Um, but let's say, you know, we wanted to throw a chamfer on there. Um, now, um, we'll, we'll pretend that this has already been milled out. So our stock is going to look just like this, but we want to throw a 10 thou edge break on there. And if I kind of zoom in here, you won't see that I've added any edge break on there yet. Um, so, and I don't have to actually model that in there for SOLIDWORKS. Um, you guys can just leave a straight cut in there, just like what you guys use for the chamfer recognition. So we'll get the ball rolling here, and first thing we'll do is do a profile operation and grab my geometry. And since this one is sitting on a fourth axis, um, we will do a wrap geometry around the X axis right down here. And we'll go and throw a chain around here, hit the green check mark, grab our tool, and I'll just use a, a spot drill for this. You can use a chamfer mill or spot drill or um, anything with a taper on there. Now, um, levels. So my upper level is at two inches. Um, let's say I just want to go down, uh, let's just do a, a 10 thou depth of my chamfer. So this is where you can just type in how much of an edge break you want in there. Now on technology, and I think I've showed this before, but um, if we go to the rest material chamfer and we change it over to chamfer and now we can change the cutting diameter so let's say I want to cut on you know 200 thou of the diameter we'll do a save and calculate and let's see what this gives us we'll do a solid verify here we're coming in here and putting a nice little edge break going around there. So if we kind of zoom in here, my model is a little faceted, um, but um, you can see we got a nice little edge break going all the way around for us. So that is one way of going about it. Now, <clears throat> I'm not a huge fan of this starting right here in the corner. Um, I want to start maybe in the top center. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to shift that. I go to my geometry and we will do a shift and we'll shift it to right there. So now if I get a top-down view, we're starting not right on a corner. Accept that, save and calculate. And now you can see we're starting in the center and going around instead of starting right on that edge point for you guys. Play that through. And if you guys want more of an edge break, um, simple enough as just going into your levels and we can put this at 20 thou. Save and calculate. And if we 
you kind of zoom in here, you'll see we have a little bit more of an edge break. So that's one way of going about doing a chamfer on, you know, like a cylinder, um, doing a, a 3D surface going on there. All right. So now, any questions on this particular one right here? Don't see any coming through, so let's hop over to our next part here. Ben. Yep, I think you explained that one quite sufficiently. <laughs> All right, so let's go to our next part here. Um, I can't remember which one it is here. This one, part three. Okay, so now, and I just took like a, a side, a slice of a, a 3D surface going on right here. So now with this one, um, we're kind of going up and down and around and kind of going all the way where different angles on there. Now with using the contour 3D option, you do not need to put a chamfer on there as well. So you don't have to touch the model. Um, so we can just go up to our contour 3D right here. We'll grab our chain. And we got our chain going all the way around the top. <clears throat> we'll just grab a uh, spot drill again here. Levels, basically how deep do I wanna go into that chamfer? Now, here's something that um, gets a little weird because if we watch my levels right here, if I click, you know, how my contour depth is is on, uh, right on par right here. If I go over and go to my technology, you'll see it's defaulted to center. Well, I don't want it on center because I'm gonna be cutting right on the tip. So let's go to left. Now, if I go back to my levels right here, you'll see that now my upper level is grayed out. I have a depth right here and I have a delta depth. So what I can just do in here is, let's say I want a, a 10 thou chamfer going all the way around the entire outside. So I can do a minus 10 thou in here. Now, the same thing as what we did with profile is we can turn on the chamfer. So we'll turn on chamfer and that's gonna open up our chamfer tab and we'll do a cutting diameter of, let's just do a 0.1 and do just one finish pass. Save and calculate. And let's do a solid verify here. And, oh, hang on. I got my, I think I have my chain going the wrong direction, yep. So we'll come in here and just do a reverse. Now, simulate, solid verify. And now we're doing a nice little 10 thou chamfer, keeping that consistent all the way on that 3D surface as well. working on, you know, that 100 thou diameter of that piece there. Pretty cool, easy, right? Any questions on this part? Nobody, all right. I think it'd be uh, good to say that this strategy would also work very well on the previous part that you shown. Um, if you don't have a fourth axis yes. that you're wrapping that geometry around. If yes. you'd wanted to do that on a three-axis machine, uh, this would be that strategy for that previous part. Yep, absolutely. I forgot about that. Uh, ben, you're asking um, show and tell how to reverse. Oh, uh, Ben, you can do it right here. You can click the edit button and then right-click and do reverse. That will reverse it right there. Um, another way you can go into it is on the geometry tab right here and you can right click on the chain and do a reverse right here as well. So can I help you out, Ben? Yeah. Hotkey F5 for those who uh, yep. like the hotkeys. Yes, was there one more way? Nope, that's the only way, or the only two ways. 
Oh, well, I guess um, there is one other way. If you guys are outside of your geometry and you hit the plus button down here, you can right click and do edit right here. And you can reverse the chain right there as well. So there is a, a third way for you. Okay, perfect. And tonight's gonna be a little bit of a shorter class just because there's not a whole lot on uh, doing chamfers, but. Grab this part here. Okay, so another way of going about it is using HSS. Um, now HSS is going to kind of work in the same terms, but we're actually working on the surface itself. Um, kind of like what we talked in the past of we're working on the actual surface nerve um, where our contour 3D and our profile with chamfer and chamfer recognition is just going off of edge, edges itself. So now what I did is I just took this part and let me kind of reverse it back through it here. Um, so what I did is I came in here and I just turned on a chamfer or edited the part and, and put a chamfer on there. So pretty simple, easy, uh, throw a chamfer on there and you're good to go. Now, um, for the solid cam side of things is we'll, we will use HSS now. And I'm gonna do parallel to curve. My geometry, the drive, what surfaces do I want to chamfer is basically what it's asking. So I'll grab that one, that one, that one, that one. Okay. And edge curve. I'll just grab this guy right here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it I don't need to do it in multiple cuts. I just need one cut. So I'm gonna come over here and click on determine by number of cuts and we'll set that at one. And we'll go ahead and grab our tool here. This one I'm just using a pretty much less spot drill but I, I called it a taper mill because you cannot use spot drills or, um, oh, there's one other one you can't use in here. Um, taper mill and, um, Oh, it's another angle one, the angle mill, or a chamfer mill. So I just took that taper mill and made it into that spot drill. Oops, forgot to select it here. All right. So levels we don't have to worry about because it's going to follow that drive surface going all the way around for us. Um, tool path parameters, just doing one cut. So um, don't have to worry about anything right there. Uh, I could go to my sorting and switch it over to one way, but uh, technically it really shouldn't matter um, at this point because we're just doing one single line cut. Now, tool axis control is where we're going to kind of offset things out a little bit. So as I play it through right now, let me just play it through and I'll show you what we got. Unfortunately, this part is a little large, so it takes a little bit to load here. So now, if I do this, let me just stop it right here. You'll see I'm cutting right on the tip. Um, not a good idea, especially going to wear out that tip really fast. And a lot of times you'll probably get just a little bit of a ridge right here. So we want to kind of offset that out and kind of out at the same time, I guess you'd say. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tell it to go down, and we're working in a metric part right here. So I'm going to I'm going to push that tool and force it down five millimeters. So we'll do five millimeters. Now, what that's going to do now is crash on us. So you can see we are. Uh, we're taking we're going quite large right now um, if you want a nice large chamfer have at her but um, this is not what we're trying to achieve right here so from here what I would want to do is since I want that tool to be down far enough 
but I don't want it to gouge into my part and you know wreck my part here. So now I can go to my gouge check and turn on my gouge. And I'm gonna un I want to gouge check against my drive surfaces. And I'll do a retract tool along. I'll do a surface normal. Okay. Now I'll save and calculate. Now it's not going to allow my part or my tool to gouge in there, but it's also going to keep that tool, the tip of that tool, five millimeters down off of the surface. So now you can see we have a nice, beautiful chamfer going all the way up for us. And if you guys are doing, you know, uh, some of you guys' parts get a little um, crazy with the, the 3D surfacing. This is one that I would, you know, if you guys are doing a lot of 3D, 3D surfacing um, or, you know, a part, something similar, this would be, I guess, you know, I'll kind of throw that out there with Greg too, but this would be kind of my ideal way of doing it. Um, that way I have more control of that chamfer going through that cut since we're working with HSS with that drive surface versus just picking a profile line. What do you think? Greg? Yeah, I definitely have to agree with that. Way more versatile using the HSS command. Yeah. You have a lot um, more. A little more tool. that goes into it, but as you can see, you have a lot more control over that tool, Beth. Yeah. So, and then now, if I just finish playing it off here, if we do an execute, we can see I'm on yellow right here, so we're right on size, so we're looking good. I got a little green hangover there, but just probably uh, tolerancing that's going on so all right any question let's see do you like to climb cut champers yes yeah uh the only time i've been um that i have not climb cut and conventional cut on a chamfer is if i'm just trying to save time on a huge production run and let's say i just have a straight bar um on you know over here and sometimes what you can do is just come over here do one cut, do your chamfer, come over here, do your chamfer down. So that way it's not, you know, going up, retracting, coming back down over in the front and moving again. I mean, we're talking milliseconds um, that it's going to save you time, but I have done that strategy just on some of our production jobs that we used to run because uh, we'd run tens of thousands of, of parts at a time. So. Yes, most of the time. I would say 99% of the time, Ben. <laughs> Any questions, guys? I don't see anything coming through here. That so. quiet crowd yeah. tonight. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, well, I guess at this point, what we'll do is I'm going to we're going to pick Greg's brain and um, kind of see. Well, real quick, yeah. before we do that, uh, let's, let's kind of go over this chamfer tool selection a little bit. Um, you were kind of talking about how you used a taper mill for this HSS pass. Yep. Um, but there's also some other advantages using that taper mill. Um, you want to go over uh, maybe the the issues that people may have when defining a chamfer tool in solid cam when their tool actually has a flat at the bottom. Sure. So if we go in here and so right now, what these little check boxes are saying is I can either ha put a tip diameter in there. Um, and since I was using a spot drill, it was at a zero, but um, these check boxes are, are auto calculation. So I can either do an auto calculation with the, the tip diameter and it's going to auto calculate my cone length based off of the taper angle, or I can uncheck this and I can tell it a cone length of what's going on there and it's automatically going to fill in that diameter. So let's say we did have a flat on there. Um, let's do a 25,000 flat on there. So now it's automatically going to calculate my cone length, and it's going to as soon as I Real hit the quick, green. Real quick, we're uh, yeah. uh, we're uh, still metric on this one. Oh, that's right. 
forgot about that. So we'll do a 0.1 millimeters. Okay. Are you so seeing uh, Eric's questions there too? Okay. Uh, this is kind of addressing Eric's uh, question. Okay, very good. Okay. So when we uh, happen to look into this one. Let's uh, expand this out a little bit here. So now you can see we have our 10,000 in here. Now, as soon as they get this green check mark, we may get popped up with errors. So right now it's telling me the selected tool has a wrong cutting length. Cutting length cannot be greater than the cone length for such type of tool. So please change it. So what I need to do is my cutting length is actually longer than my cone length. And we can kind of see that right here. We zoom way in, we have this little bit of a flat right here. And since it's a taper mill, it knows that it, there, there's no cutting flutes on that flat. So what I need to do is come to my cutting length here and change that up to the exact cone length. So we'll do uh, 5.95. And now we're good to go. So um, that's sometimes where you run into it, trying to use you know that taper mill, and if I'm not getting deep enough here, Greg, let me know, um, as your tool because it knows that, let me uh, get back in here. It knows that this is our taper mill right here. This is just considered as part of your shank. So that's how a solid cam has seen it. Let me uh, move this up here. Yeah, for those guys that uh, are trying to use a spot drill definition or a chamfer mill definition, um, it's going to the theoretical point. All the tool path is going to the point of that tool. Yeah. So if your tool actually does have some sort of flat and you touch it off the flat, then your tool is actually going to be programmed deeper than what you intended for. So in a lot of times, it's better to define your chamfer tool as a taper mill if there's a flat across the bottom. Yep. And the nice thing is with HSS, you guys don't have to worry about that because you can't select a spot drill um, or a chamfer drill. Um, it's only, tapers are our only option in there. So, or you can do a taper ball as well. And the taper ball would get you the exact same thing as what a taper mill would, so. Is that going to answer your question there, Eric? Yeah, he's got another question in there for what's the best practices for determining the size of the chamfer mill to use? Um, you know, my, <laughs> my favorite tool to use um, for doing like chamfer recognition and even you know simple chamfers within reason so you know this what do i have on for this chamfer right here we got one millimeter well let's uh let me get my calculator over here one divided by 25.4 so that's you know a 40 thou chamfer um you know something like that so my kind of favorite go-to is using a half inch spot drill um, because a lot of times, um, if you guys aren't using a probe, what I like to use is a spot drill as like a dowel pin as well. Um, so I can, if I'm running more than one part, I will program my spot drill to come down and do a M00 in there. And then I'll load my part against there, tighten it down. And then I can also use that spot drill to spot drill my holes and I can use it for chamfers. So, um, that, I mean, just me personally, that's my my kind of my go-to tool is a half-inch spot drill. Just because when I was on the machine, that that tool never left the machine ever um, to load up a chamfer or, or a taper mill or something you know a little bit larger. Um, I would never do it unless my chamfer was bigger than um, my cutting length or my cone length was allowed. So, yeah, Ben, half inch. Yeah. I mean, what, what would you be? Yeah, I think it's good. Kind of, uh, for me, I always like the three eighths, um, but it, it really depends on the uh, part that you're doing. 
I mean, sometimes if you're trying to get up against a wall, you're going to want to go with a much smaller diameter. That way you can maximize the length of the chamfer and get as close to that wall as possible. Yeah, and let's get to that. Um, I'm going to show that. Uh, I'm actually close out of this part. Oh, we're going to extra innings on this one. <laughs> we got some bonus parts coming up. No, no bonus parts, but exit the sketch. I'm not in the sketch. Oh. Control Q. Come on. All right. So let's go back. Oh, look at that. Ronnie coming out with the six flute and quarter inch MA Ford. Uh, you know, I would have to agree with that, Ronnie. That's yeah, MA Ford. Um, I don't know if you guys have used the MA Ford line at all, but uh, they do have really nice tooling. Um, I really like their tooling. Uh, the other one that I was really impressed with is um, oh, we did a live cut on it. What was that one? Um, videos. It was boy, we Greg, we put too many videos in here. Uh, the Maypal tools. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Maypal, uh, I was really blown away on what we could hog off with that Maypal tool. Um, here's a little test cut kind of showing it on, I think it was 17.4 stainless, um, but really plowed through it really nice. So, um, yeah, real nice tool. Uh, okay, so what I was getting at right here, kind of along Greg's point, is if you guys are trying to get in a really tight area, um, the best thing to do is go to your technology and your chamfer and change your diameter. So if you're trying to get that tool, you know, so it's not rubbing, let's say we have a wall up here and so we, we, we don't have a lot of clearance up here, change that over to, you know, 450 thou. So that tool is, let me uh, simulate it here. Oops. So now if I can get in here, you can see my tool is just working on the very edge. And that way it, it keeps that shank away if there was like a wall right here. Or vice versa, if we had something down in here, um, like a very shallow pocket, what we could do is come in here and do, you know, 50 thou or even 25 thou. So if you calculate, simulate, And now you can see, oops, let me get one more step in here. We're just working on the very tip of it. So we're, if we had, a, like I said, a, a floor down here that we were worried about um, colliding with, then we, we can modify it that way. So. Like George has a question here too. Uh, I'm using a double angle cutter to chamfer the underside inside of the of that oval cut. All right, hang on, I'm going back through the six flute MA Ford question mark. Um, that's the top one, right? Yes. Okay, six flute. Um, I'll go to their site real quick. Uh, and products. So here is MA Ford's website, uh, Ben. Do this. Okay, here I can't I can't keep up here. Um uh, ben, so six flute MA Ford. So yeah, Ben, you can go right here for the uh, the MA Ford tools. Um, Ronnie, are you using the uh, the, the countersink one? Yes. Okay. So this is what. Uh, and here is. I think this is it. Yep, six flute right here. And these tools work really good if you guys are, um, if you have a lot of holes um, and you're running multiple parts. We used to get a bunch of these at work and uh, we'd, we'd have a drill press right next to the machine and the operator would take the drill press and just lightly tap all the holes because it was faster um, for them to 
do that outside of the machine while the machine was still running, kind of keep production going though. So, all right. So Ben, uh, Maypal tool, FYI. Ben, you got me confused there. Uh, George, uh, you're at, you're talking about the Goering uh, diver tools. Goering does do a great uh, tool. Um, where I like to use the Goering uh, diver tools is if I'm doing a lot of plunging. Um, so a lot of, you know, helical entry into a part. Um, they have really good chip evacuation, but the chip evacuation cavity, at least in my opinion, isn't as good as like the MA Fords and the, the Maypole cutters. Um, but like I said, if you guys are doing a lot of pocketing, um, I mean, instead of using a, you know, a two degree helix or a five degree helix with your eye machining, that Goering diver, you can put a 15 to 20 degree helix, depending on, um, what material you're cutting. Now aluminum, we can, I mean, go even higher yet. So, all right. Um, George, how about using a double anger? cutter to cut that oval oh um yes um oh what are those called um for that one what you can do uh two ways of going about that um we can draw it up and as a shape tool and use HSS because HSS is the only one that can undercut. Um, we can also do, I should have drawn up one of these parts. Why is my, uh... there we are. Um, if we did a contour 3D, let me just try something real quick. Greg's telling me I'm going down a rabbit hole. I don't want to go down. No, I'm kidding. Levels. No, no I'm, I'm liking it. So what we could do as well, uh, I think it was a George. Yeah. What we could do as well, George, is use that same tool, that custom tool, and use that bottom as your geometry. And then what we'd want to do is, because it's going to go off of the, the very bottom tip of the tool. And obviously, um, we don't want to do that. So what you're going to want to do is going to put a little delta in there to compensate for that as well. So that way it will kind of come down and then follow along there. You're just going to have to do a little bit of playing around right there. Um, option, the other option is, you know, come in here, edit that part and draw that chamfer on there and use your, uh, that same cutter as well. So did that explain it well enough, George? Yeah, I think okay. my vote's with the uh, shape tool and the uh, pick the bottom profile. Yeah. That, that's going to come out really clean. Yeah. And simulation would be uh, very nice. Yeah, that's nice. thing. you can be able to see what's going on there. And like I said, it, that way you, you can play with it up or down as well. Okay. Um, we're at... Okay. Woodruff cutter, yep. So yeah, you could use a woodruff cutter as well, Ben, to to do that underside. Um, uh, Ronnie, yeah, MA Ford, love those tools. That's the part. That's the part. I think we're down to the next one is Ben about lead in and lead out. Can you show us in YouTube with what was that? Uh, ben, if you want, uh, here I'll get you the link. Um, I'll just uh, copy that. And for anybody that wants that, I just put that into the uh, chat for you, Ben. Um, do we need a lead in and lead out? Uh, I would say yes, uh, especially with chamfering. Um, you will get a witness mark if you're uh, starting right on exact point. So right here, you know, we're arcing in, but we're still kind of starting in on, on the same point. So something like this, I forgot to mention, is, um, well, 
I don't have the option. I was going to say we can do a uh, extension overlap here and extend that out. I, I think you can oh, if wait, you no, uh, put it on the left side of the tool. Yeah, I was on 3D contour still. Okay, so right here, uh, extension overlap. So what we could do is put a put two five. We'll put something large so you guys can see it in there. So now I'm leading in right here, going around all the way around. It's going past that mark by 250 thou, and then arcing off. That would be the ideal because if we do rate size on size, uh, if we do zero and uh, or my link put this at none so we're going to be starting right here it's going to be plunging down in and going through and uh, you could have the nicest machine out there you're still going to get a little tiny witness mark there so definitely that's the route you want to go is um and do it so all right i'm trying to to think of what is called making old style drawers edge connections done in woodworking all the time but that is the name of the tool i was thinking oh yeah dovetail cutter yeah and you can use that um as well for let's say if we're using a contour 3d tool select we could come in here add a dovetail slot mill right here so and that one you would want to watch the lead in and lead out because obviously we need to lead out far enough. Okay. Yeah, I think anytime you're doing an undercut, it's good practice to have a good size lead in. Yeah. Lead <laughs> um, okay. Finger joints, joints. Never mind. Okay. I have... <laughs> okay. I think I got. There it is. Up to my, yep. <laughs> I did I miss anybody's question in here? There is. They were flying in here, so I just want to make sure I got them all answered here. I know we start talking about tools and the floodgates open. <laughs> yeah. I think you covered them well. <laughs> Anything you else, um you can think of, Greg, that I missed out here? Yeah, I would like to see the uh, poor man's chamfer where you do an HSS projection with a ball end mill across that edge. Okay. So let's go here. And we will do a HSS. You think in linear? Right now. No, no uh, projection, yep. uh, user defined. Yep. That way we're just driving that ball end mill on that uh, drive curve. Okay. And now projection curve. I would assume we need to go around. Now this isn't going to produce the pretty angular chamfer, but if you need the breaking edge in a hurry, this is a pretty good strategy. Oops. Um, let me change tool type. Where's my ball? There it is. And now, Save and calculate, and we need to, I gotta see what's going on here. Simulate, actually let me suppress what we did here. I can already tell we're way too deep here. Well, you're right on that tangency point. We need to give it a little bit of a, a drive surface offset. It's getting it though. Um, all right, so we need to go to. Oh, tool axis control. And we'll do center. And 
we'll go down 0 0.01. Solid verify. Oh, way too much. This is the, this is what you're uh, thinking, Greg. Uh, I actually I was thinking more along the lines of. Uh, uh, keep that on auto. Okay. Uh, zero on the axial shift. And a geometry, a geometry shift of drive surface offset, maybe minus five or, yeah. There we go. Yeah, we're still going uh, here too deep here. Uh, change your uh, drive surface from the uh, inner edges to that uh, outer it. circumference. Yeah, because it's going to prioritize the uh, tangency point based off those surfaces. There we go. Very cool. Another way of going and going about it for you guys. Right. Uh, ben, now, another benefit of using the HSS of, for doing these chamfers is if you ever get into five axis machining and you need to make a chamfer across all five axes, it's going to behave the same as the HSS module. So it's going to be very comfortable for you. Yeah. Even let's see, is there a dovetail mail? Here, I'll, I'll, Ben, I'll show you what tools are all available for you. Say so new. So right here, let me try to drag this out. Come on. Are all your tools? So you got your. I think you were looking for your dovetail mill right here or your slot mill. And now if there's no tool in here, Ben, um, that if, if you're looking for something custom, that's when we get into the shape tools. So, so I think got that one. And I got the saw blade at the bottom. All right, anything else, guys? What tool type do you use to select if you were planning to make a custom shape tool? End mill. Um, that is your, your go-to. Um, always grab an end mill, and it's going to be the diameter of the end mill is going to be the cutting diameter of your shape tool. So, um, and I did do a, a short little video on that um, back in the day if you just type in shape tool, but yeah, you always, from what Sydney uh, told me years and years ago is always use an end mill. And it doesn't matter if it's a custom spot drill or a form tool or, you know, anything like that. Call it an end mill and then add your shape to it like that. So, and then Eric can help you out too is when I was doing, uh, when I was in your guys' shoes, it's like shape tools are something that you don't use very often. So, if you type in shape, right here's a quick little video on showing how to sh do the shape tool and applying that shape tool with the end mill itself. So that can help you out, Eric. Okay, yeah, but there's no video showing how to make up the shape tool. Oh, really? Okay, so let's do it. All right, so 
Let's do tool, solid cam, tool library, shape tools, and we'll just add a new group and add. And let's go. The request is for a corner rounder. And this. And how oh, I'm getting here. We're going to build a. They're looking for a corner rounder. So, corner rounder, hit that one. And then your shank. So now we have top diameter, we'll say is half inch. We got the radius in there as well to kind of auto calculate for us. Um, start angle. That looks good. Bottom diameter. Um, we want a little bit of a diameter on there. Um, max diameter half inch looks good. So now I go to my cylinder, half inch. And our tool is going to be four inches long. Is that a good shape tool for you, Eric? Yep. Okay. So from right there, I can do the save and exit. Well, let me give this a name. Oh, I can't type, Eric. Save and exit. Now, come in here and get rid of this dialog. We'll do add end mill. Like I said, since our diameter is half inch, we're gonna use a half inch. And then now we're going to go to the shape, new group, Eric. So now, let me just kind of show it. Everything is showing like what we did for our shape tool. So it's going to be calculating off that half inch diameter here. Now, here's one thing you want to do is come over to your topology and change up your cutting length. So get that cutting length. And I don't have that tool in front of me, so I don't know the exact cutting length. but so that yellow is going right along there because if we have this entire tool as yellow, it's not going to, it's going to see that is all one big flute right there. And it's not, if we shank out, it's not going to show us that we're crashing. Um, 197. But, um, I think he's telling you what the cutting oh, length is. Oh, cutting length. <laughs> 197. There you go. Hey, Got to keep Ronnie around. Now, if you're in How here. How much gets past that guy? Yeah. If you're in here, um, let's say, well, I, I, that, I, I thought that was going to work, but it's not. Um, I need to make it just a little bit bigger. Okay, so now you guys can go to your shape tab and you can edit the shape from right here as well. So you can click on here and we can change the diameter to, you know, maybe a three quarter inch and, you know, your, your cylinder diameter to three quarter inch as well. And it's going to save it just to this local library. So does that um, kind of help out there, Eric? Lose Eric here. Must be typing. Yeah, and remember, guys. I've done There's that. There's a couple to different schools of thought. Okay. Let's do this. When it comes to setting the diameter of the tool, whether you're going off the tip diameter or the outer diameter, just depending on what your personal preference is, make sure that you set your end mill diameter in the topology page to the one that you plan on using. Okay, features extrude. Uh, do one inch here. Okay, so now save that part. Save that. No. Come on. Okay, now 
I'll do two little solid cam new milling. Stock. And 3D model. All right. So now let's do a profile. Okay. Tool select. Add end mill point five shape. New Eric point one ninety seven Oh what was the height? One ninety seven. Oh yeah, sorry. Provide that. Point one ninety seven. I think I did off. I need to do the tip diameter on this one. Fair. Yep. Sorry. So you could you could do the tip diameter, or you could do a uh, profile offset. Yeah. So my tip diameter was at a shape is top. Bottom diameter, 106. So I can go in here, 0.106. Now, save and calculate. Simulate, solid verify. Is that what you're looking for, Eric? Well, of course you're doing it right. You're listening to us. <laughs> All right, that, that looks like a, I'm, I'm doing yep. Gouging is still an issue. Well, unfortunately on this one, I can't do a gouge check because my design model is just a square box. So it's going to show me that I'm gouging all the way through. Um, now, if you're gouging kind of on this bottom line right here, because we're, you know, we're getting real pan this around here where you know right kind of size on size or you know for the depth wise if we're getting a little line right here what I would do at that point is go to your technology and offset that geometry by you know maybe ten thou so now save calculate simulate solid verify Oop, that went too fast so now you can see we're keeping that edge away. Let me do one more step here. So we're not getting that little witness mark or sometimes a line right there. Where was that offset? That is right in your technology. So if you click the geometry button in your technology, and then where it says modify offset, you can put a positive or a negative number in there. So. Yeah, I definitely feel your pain, Eric. I've never uh, bought a tool, a corner rounding tool from a manufacturer that matched its specs either. <laughs> yep, and that's that's kind of a good way of kind of going about it too. Um, and same thing for the top as well. So, you know, we're going down 197 thou. So what we can do is do a positive, you know, five thou upper 
So now we're kind of keeping away from the top and bottom to kind of compensate for the the manufacturer um, not doing that perfect tool. And you'll still get a nice corner round, but you're not getting that straight line going all the way around for the top or the bottom as well. Yeah, and wear compensation is also your friend when you're yeah. using corner <laughs> rounders. Yep. Harvey tools, yep, yep. I have some uh some good tools. It seems like uh no matter you could buy the top and end mills out there and, and uh especially with corner rounders, it's just there's a, they're always ground, but uh there's just not one is ever the same. All right, I think we kind of answered everybody's here. How do you show it rounder, more splines, more rounder? Um, ben, you got me a little confused here. Are you talking about the cell, solid verified, Ben? Chamfer is like stock. Let's put that wood first. Um, well, I, I guess I think what you're getting at, Ben, is you, what you'd want to do for, for a bigger radius here is come in here and modify your shape. So we can come up here, do edit, and let's say we have a one inch. And our cylinder. Uh, Am I going? I, on I think he's talking more about the verify accuracy. Oh. All right. Solid verify settings accuracy. Yeah, I got an eight though. There, a nice, green, clean, crisp. So, all right, I think um, so. Yeah, yeah. Wraps up everything. I think we're gonna have to hold off on uh, solid cam world uh, for next week. Maybe after uh, Ronnie. Well, I. I I say we uh, give a little bit of a teaser. Sure. Um, lots of cool new things coming in Solid Cam 2018. Uh, lots of stuff coming down the pipeline. And uh, when are we going to start doing uh, night classes on uh, showing the functionality of 2018? We will. Do we have that planned out yet? It's not planned out yet, but let me. Um... So next week, uh, Ronnie is going to show us uh, Eureka and kind of go through the ins and outs how Eureka works. Um, what Eureka is a third party uh, machine simulation that is reading reading the G code. So whatever uh, the machine is, is going to show, whatever's happening in that uh, simulation is exactly what's going to be happening on the machine because it's reading the G code. But after that, we are going to be hopping into um, I'm going to, we're, we're going to, Greg and I are going to try to break this up because there is so much new stuff that they added in for solid cam 18. Um, that's why it's a, took a little bit longer to get released. Um, but we're going to kind of show you guys the ins and outs and we're going to kind of break it up into segments for you guys. So we'll kind of cover, you know, what's new with the, the two and a half D stuff. What's new with the three D stuff. What's new with, um, you know, just kind of the general basics of everything. So we'll kind of go through that with you guys as well. So definitely uh, some good classes uh, coming up. And I didn't think um, Service Pack 1 was going to be released already or so we would uh, fit that one in a little bit sooner, but um, it's out and uh, it's ready for you guys to, to play with as well. So but, okay, so I don't see... Do you want to give one little teaser of solid cam uh, what's coming up in the future? Uh, are we talking 18 or are we going beyond? Well, let's go beyond. 
Uh, going beyond. Uh, most of you have uh, clamored for it, and it is being delivered. There is a new verification module that's going to be coming out that is going to be giving us a reverse button along with some other features. Very cool for Solid Verify. Um, we hope to be able to uh, show you early builds of it in the coming weeks as it's being developed and uh, should be arriving for the uh, next version of uh, Solid Cam, if not sooner. So there's a there's a little teaser for you guys of uh, kind of the plans of what's kind of going forward, and uh, we'll 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 keep giving you a little teasers along the way, um, especially when you kind of get into the what's new with uh, Solid Cam 18. Greg took some really good notes when he was over in Germany. So um, uh, what do we mean by reverse bend? So right now, um, let me kind of zoom out of this part. If I play this through, I come in there. Oh no, I want to reverse that. I want to back it up and come back over here well, I can't um, there is no bar to to reverse the direction so now what I have to do is start all over and now stop it at the right spot so what Greg is saying is there'll be um, a reverse button so you can do a single step in reverse um, sounds like they're gonna have a little slider bar down here for kind of like what we have for machine sim with multiple color operations, right? And that wasn't that uh, part of it. Yeah, yeah, uh, that was shown. So, so yeah, the development team has been working uh, very hard on getting that for us. And uh, there's some other things that they're trying to build into it. Stuff we can't talk about at this time, um, but we're hoping to have early builds that we can show off in the night class and uh, kind of. I'll let you guys know what to expect in the next version. Yeah. So very cool stuff coming down the pipeline. And in some of the stuff, um, you know, will be um, a reg key settings for you guys. And I will, will def, Greg and I will definitely show you those reg key settings so you guys can uh, try it out for yourself. Um, and I would assume the simulation one's going to be coming along pretty soon. So don't have to wait too long for that. So, Ronnie, are you happy with the multiple colors? <laughs> <laughs> very cool so all right guys well we'll kind of wrap it up there we're kind of going a little over a bit but um thanks again for uh joining on a uh, tuesday night and um you know if you guys do have questions please shoot me an email as always or give us a call on the support line for those of you guys that are watching this on youtube my email address is down below um send those over to me email uh, don't make comments on the on the video just because I don't regularly uh, check my comments because there's so many in there. Um, but uh, if you guys do have questions, send those over to email and uh, anything we can do to help you guys out, uh, let us know, guys. So, all right, have a wonderful rest of you guys tonight. And if I don't talk to you guys in the meantime, we will see you guys next week next week with uh, Ronnie's um, Eureka software. So I'm pretty excited to see that. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.